G'day everyone, welcome back to a very special episode today. I had to get to talk to one of my very close and important people that mean a lot to me, Glenn Money. And we're having a, a good old catch up today. We, if you literally, if you're interested in bettering yourself, if you're interested in learning how to self reflect, if you're learning to, if you want to learn how your inner psyche actually work, Glim Money throws down some money on this damn podcast. It was absolutely fantastic. Like he threw down some heat. He was definitely prepared. That's for sure. We talk about a whole range of different things. It comes from uh, relationships to our one of our psychedelic journeys, and we we talk about how we approach it with intentionality, and we should like kind of step through the step by step process of how to actually do that. And then we talk a lot about literally how to get your mind in the right place, and how to think, and how to act and do things. So. You, it's just, it was just absolutely fire. I can't I can't explain it any other way. So make sure you listen to this whole podcast. Like the whole way through is literally it was fantastic because there's nuggets the whole way through. Definitely save it. And if you get any value from this podcast, like any value at all, please like, share, and subscribe. That really helps like the algorithm to get this podcast out there. And essentially, a couple of weeks ago, we were like 155 on the Apple Health podcast for Australia's health and fitness. And that's just bumped up to 116. And that's because of you guys. So that's, that's I couldn't thank you enough. Like if you're listening to this, like seriously, thank you. And please like um, yeah, keep it up because that's just helping us do all the good stuff, especially the sharing on the stories and the reviews on the Apple podcast is just help contributing to this podcast growth. But yeah, the like button, the sharing, the subscribing, all of that is the best. And even if you do subscribe, I don't send you any extra notifications or whatever it is. You just, every time there's an episode, you just get a bing, you just get a little bell pop a notification that comes up. So make sure you do that as well. That would be fantastic. So Guys, if you haven't noticed already, I have some coaching available, some part-time, some full-time, and some some community coaching. And if you're interested in like what that's even about, I have a free quiz to help you like understand yourself. And that is on my website, coreybattle.com. And then you can go and click and try the free quiz on there to learn how to basically discover yourself and figure out where you're at at the moment with your life, which I think is Awesome. So give that a crack if you want to see how, how that goes. Also, I have a recipe ebook available available in the links below. And essentially what I did with that was research to what all the best ingredients are and where they where they are and where you can get them and whatever. And I put them in a recipe ebook and the main focus was how can I make this tasty and how can I make this easy as possible and how can I include instructions for meal prep, bone broth, all the little health hacks that you can use. Put them into a recipe ebook. Boom. We got all the goods there and you can get that by clicking the link below. Also, if you guys didn't know, like I've obviously been training in the gym, I compete in physique competitions and I've been training since the age, like I've been training for, I think it's like 12, 13 years now. I've been training for ages and sort of my journey with training was I, f- I, I started in a shed, I started training in a shed, not at a gym. I didn't join a gym until I was 21, which forced me to get really in tune with my body. Like we didn't even have like, m- like mirrors and stuff in there for, for a really long period of time. And I had to learn how to train, get in touch with my body, figure everything out and I got some crazy results, and that's how I literally entered, I got a pro card, entered a physique physique competition, untested one, and, and beat everyone naturally, um, which I thought was actually quite fantastic, and uh, I was very proud of myself for that. But I had to learn all of these crazy um, techniques, and I applied them when I got to a gym. I remember people in the gym being like, "Man, as if you did that, did that with your body with a home gym," and I was like. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I should compete now. So yeah, and then essentially I've mastered and honed, well, what I think, I wouldn't say mastered, but I've honed a lot of those skills to figure them out as best as possible and they work really well for me. And if you want some of that source, if you want to learn the secrets, you want to understand how I do it, if you like don't want to have any help in the gym again and you want to learn how to actually get motivated, you want to learn how to build it all, of, all yourself, you want like access to every single workout that I do, everything I wrote, there's a, there's a document in like this course and program that I had that has like 160 plus workouts in there <laughs> that you can use, but you can apply to you. And you want to use, use all those different systems. I literally have an educational course that step by step by step by step by step helps you build a better body that you can be proud of to increase your confidence and upgrade your energy and have all the good stuff in there. Just DM me program or just send me a DM, like message me on Instagram, head to Instagram, go down the link below, on, on whatever platform you're watching this on and then send me a message on Instagram and we can get cranking, especially program. You'll be able to see all the good stuff on there. Also, bone broth. If you guys are listening, you know I love bone broth. You get 12% off the best Australian bone broth by going to theherbaldoctors.com and putting in the code Corey12 or clicking the link in my Instagram uh, bio 
you can get 12% off there, which is great. And of course, this podcast is sponsored and is brought to you by Eternum Labs. And we got some brand new, awesome supplements out, especially some really cool antioxidant ones. And I'll let you go on there and, and figure those out. But basically what antioxidants do, the ones that we have is, we, we're just saturated with toxins, right? In 2021, we're saturated with toxins all the time. Within our water, in the air we breathe, in the electromagnetic fields, all of that stuff. Our bodies aren't used to getting rid of that. So antioxidants and the ones that we choose basically attract all the toxins to them that helps your body get rid, get rid of those toxins. And there's a whole bunch of studies and stuff show that like majority of people don't have don't even have the DNA to like help get rid of all those toxins. And if you're training and if you're stressed out, that just like reduces all your antioxidant levels that you can actually produce. Hence why we create some of these amazing products. We have a whole range. You can go to eternumlabs.com.au, put in the code Corey and get 10% off. So without any further ado, guys, I hope you love this podcast as much as I did because this was just one of my absolute favorites. Enjoy. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. We're on the intention fucking continue <laughs> yeah just getting clear on the intention and the purpose for why you're doing things and it's epic that you've already discovered that for yourself up there i'm sure you had it all written down before you left what <laughs> didn't have it you written down but thought about it and i yeah. stole it from you like every time i literally like set intentions and shit i literally like think about you <laughs> and i'm like what would be glenn be doing and thinking about and how would he say this and do stuff because you like embody that so i like I tried to to do that myself. So when I actually got to Queensland, I was like, all right, cool, fucking on. Was that moment like when you were just like, you got to your house, you got the keys, you'd set everything up. Did you just take a moment to be like, I'm really fucking here. I'm <laughs> I'm living I'm living in Gold Coast. I'm at I'm, it's come to fruition. Dude, so it wasn't actually here because like when I was here, it was like I rocked up, Benji came around. We're just moving shit in like crazy, like moving all stuff around the house, like as you do trying to set everything up. And because like just come up from Adelaide and I've got all my stuff, it was just like a, a small trailer of stuff. I was like, man, there's a lot of extra stuff I need. Like forget, like I gotta get bin bags, gotta get a chopping board, I gotta get you just forget all the stuff. You're like, God damn it. But um Hectic, man. Yeah, but the moment was I went for a walk, I think it was the day after. I just went for a walk and I was like, looked on my maps and I was like, the beach is that way. Let's walk to the beach. And I was walking through and there was just like the most beautiful houses like I've ever seen, man. Like yeah. ever seen. And I was like, it was just like, this is ridiculous. And I was, I was just sending Rob snap straight away. Rob is mm-hmm. um, obviously the, the friend of he, ours. He's, 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 him. he's the yeah. house man. Yeah, he's the house man. <laughs> and yeah. I just went down, I remember walking past like this school was ridiculous. It's like the, the TSS, the Southport School, something like that. Mm-hmm. And it's got these most beautiful, pristine rugby fields. So just walking, it's like walking down a hill. And then it was like, just this the pristine, clear water. The sun was just rising over like the city of Gold Coast, look for like Miami. Everything was just blue, crisp and clean and clear. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> like yeah. I just had this moment within my chest where I just had all these feelings. And it was like, yeah, but I was sort of like, at the same time, it was like, it was so beautiful. Like, oh my God, like, like I made it here. This is where I'm supposed to be right now. And it was like beautiful. But at the same time, I was like, man, do I deserve this? Like I've even been in the house. I was like, this is just ridiculous. Do I actually deserve this? And it took like awareness to be like, yes, God damn, you deserve this. Man. <laughs> You've been working really hard. Keep it up. Keep yeah, going. It's just you have another been. step. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so good. And obviously Kettle will be joining you in a couple, well, like not even a couple of weeks now, a week and a half and he'll be up there. Yep. He's up on the 17th, man. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I was thinking about him today and I was like, man, I can't wait for him to get up here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Nice. Mm. But what about you, man? What's new with you? What's been happening? Dude, I have become the custodian of the ice bath. And um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a new chapter in it. I'm actually thinking about renaming the ice bath the Batwell Bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> After oh, you, you, you started it. Um, it's I, yours now, man. I've been, yeah, I've been in a bit of, um, I've been in a bit of a, a panic with all my friends moving up to Queensland. So I bought myself a sauna as well. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, as we talked about before the call, I, I've entered a new relationship entanglement, which has been like a, a big growth edge for me. And yeah, man, just living life, getting clear on, getting clear on um, my energy and my goals and everything that I'm working towards as well. So, so got a house that's being built at the moment too. So things are good yeah. down here. 
Yeah, that's yeah. good, man. That is still happening. What is like some stuff that you've been learning? Because it took you a little while to warm up for the relationship. I'd love to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like I had no idea what direction you wanted to take this pod, and I'm like, I should, I should just think, just in case you ask me anything about this, I should just have some things <laughs> back in the mind. But no, you know, I I realized, man, I have so much resistance talking about it, especially around friends and family. That's why I was, I was like, yeah, we're just vibing or whatever. And what I have sort of uncovered is there's like a little trauma around sharing relationships and um, like being embarrassed if it doesn't work out or being embarrassed if you end up getting rejected. And it comes from like when I was seven, the, the first girl that I ever liked, um, my friend went up and told her she was the girl up the street and then um, she did not like me back. And then I remember um, everyone hanging out in my backyard and sort of being teased because she didn't like me. So then in that moment, I made it mean that I'm not safe. Like it's not safe to tell people that you like them or tell other people that you've got this good thing going on in case it doesn't go very well. Um, Or you experience the embarrassment that you're feeling in this moment. So realizing that that trauma was still playing out in my resistance to even just be open about it with my friends or my family um, is like a, is a bit of a deep dive. It's like, whoa, all right. So this is still operating. Does it still stir me? Do I want to, do I want to still carry this backpack with me or do I want to unload it and um, step, create a new belief around um, it's safe to share um, relationships with others and be in the, in the joy of it and in the excitement of it. Yeah, which I think's like so powerful you say that, man. I always love when you like start spitting all this good stuff because you actually think, <laughs> think about things quite a lot. Yeah. Because like mm-hmm. I for myself, I put myself in that situation of when I would be like a little bit younger or something. And even now, it's just like, let's say someone asks you a question and you're like, oh, and you just say, oh, I don't like talking about it for some reason. But you don't really ask yourself why. <laughs> Or like, what's the, what's the reason? And like, yeah. what, what's bad about actually sharing this stuff? Mm-hmm. I love how you just like dissected it, found yeah. the exact moment. You're like, oh, that's what it is. Yeah. This is the preconditioning. And yeah. all right, cool. I'm going to get vulnerable and, and share. That's the work, man. It's like, why do I keep walking out the room every time my mom asks how this thing is going? I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like I'm like, dude, like, why am I like I'm not a kid anymore? Why is this still operating within me? Yeah. Um, but that's the work, man. It's like getting aware of the triggers that you have, getting aware of the behaviors that are coming from the triggers, and then actually just sitting with it and being like, all right, so when was the first time I experienced this thing? And going back to that moment and um, realizing that the beliefs that you created about yourself in that moment and how that's played out over your life, and then deciding in that moment where like whether you, it still serves you or not, or if you want to create a new belief or create a new behavior around how you want to be with this type of thing. Straight up. Full on. Love- <laughs> Good on you, man. <laughs> Getting it done. I'd like Thanks, to just man. talk about, cause I think like you've, you've probably like self-reflected on this and just to like give a message to the, uh, to the guys out there. Um, in terms of, I just love to hear your thoughts on this, man. Just your, <laughs> your journey in terms of like, you met this girl and you like got along with her really well. And then you're like, you mm-hmm. were in quotation marks vibe. And like, I say, I say that just for everyone who's listening right now, because I kept asking Glenn, I'm like, Oh, so Still when's vibing. your girlfriend and stuff? Yeah, and he's like, well, when are you going to put a label on it? And he's like, she said like they had a conversation together and, and she's like, Oh, well, what are we? And he was just like, we just vibing. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we hung out, did yeah, something, Glenn's like, we just vibing, but now obviously like it's yeah. progressed. You guys are like done really well when you started connect. Like, I just like to hear like that progression yeah. for you in terms of like, for sure. like letting go and like opening up. Yeah. So first of all, let me clarify. We're still vibing. The vibe <laughs> but we're still vibing. Yeah. Um, but what really triggered me was like, she's like, like this thing that we've been doing, like hanging out every week, dating, we've been dating. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, slow down, pause pause on that and I was it, to say that I was dating someone went against this identity that I had created for myself like this solo world traveler that's just like doing his thing expressing himself can't be tied down no one can like really get to that place in my heart um, but then realizing that that was like my own shit that was coming up and um, 
like real the growth for me was like in exploring this even more and it was really cool like it's the first time i've really found a chick that like i feel super aligned with not just on a physical and an emotional level but like the yeah there's a there's a certain level of um work that we've each done on ourselves and we're bringing it into this container called uh, a relationship and um, <laughs> I said yeah we're 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 we're, even, we're expanding through it like we're learning through it so it's um it's been a, a growth journey and um call, like calling myself out if i start projecting and just like even more so becoming aware of the triggers that i can't experience when i'm single that can only be experienced in a relationship dynamic it's been cool. Like what? Hmm. Um, like jealousy is something that I've experienced a lot in my past when I've been in relationship dynamics, but I don't experience it when I'm single. Um, so just getting jealous of little things like, oh, like there's something here for me. And just being able to verbalize that without making her wrong for what she's done. And for, hey, so this, this is actually a trigger for me. Like you training with this guy at the gym feeling some some way about it and there's nothing wrong with it but i just want to acknowledge like the healing that i'm experiencing right now by um sharing that with you yeah not to get too deep or anything but yeah no true man i think a lot of people need to hear it man and how did you how did you like sort of melt into it how did you like open up and like start to let yourself well that's been the really powerful thing of this dynamic so far is the communication around those sort of things where um we're not we're not unconsciously reacting and like doing the whole like oh i'm triggered so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go a little bit cold and until she figures out what's going on in my mind <laughs> like so like just being just recognizing the triggers when they come up and then communicating them from a centered place where you're not making the other person wrong which is um it's a, it's a new like we can talk about personal development and um, growing but until you're in the practice of it with someone that is also in the practice of it then um you're not in the game you're not in the battlefield and that's just what i've been doing so and that's where the most growth is that's for sure yeah yeah for sure man like i, I remember back in your previous relationship when <laughs> you were in the battlefield hardcore <laughs> a lot of the time and then you'd be coming to me with these things and like it's it's easy to be like the one giving advice and be like, yeah, man, this is what I'm seeing as an outsider and as a friend that cares about you. But when you're in the triggers yourself, it's a lot harder to navigate. You're like, Oh God, it's so hard. Yeah. You need someone to bounce off of to like validate, like is my feelings and my thoughts right now legit or are they just, is it just my ego? Like what's going up? I need you to bounce yeah. because yeah. I don't want to make the wrong decision. <laughs> Cause if I believe myself, like, nah, I'm definitely right here. And then you go back and you're like, I'm right here. And like, no, I'm not. I was yeah. clearly I wasn't right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got to sort sure, something man. out, man. Help me out. Am I legit or not? <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. And we had many of those chats and I, I loved, I love the role of being like coaching you through this stuff, but now it's a lot, it's a lot harder to be in it and being the, the player. Yeah. And there's mm-hmm. so many lessons to learn, man. So many lessons to learn. Yeah, man. Nah, all the best, man. I hope it goes really well for you. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, also, it's been like... Thanks, what? thanks for asking the, like, the most difficult questions right off the bat. I'm like, oh, this is going to trigger me if he goes in this direction. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the harder stuff done first and then we can get to the good mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, what I look yeah. like talking about is... Um, so it's been like a month and a half since our mushroom trip, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And we yeah. went deep into that was a mushroom journey. trip. And we did a, a ceremonial hipstery most hippie way possible to get as much growth out of it. <laughs> Dude, how's it been for you? Have you like integrated? Have you had any other thoughts? Because obviously after like plant medicine, mm-hmm. whatever we do, it always takes ages. For myself, mm-hmm. I wish that I spent a little bit more time reflecting on it, but I haven't. So that's why I'm mm-hmm. asking you now because <laughs> I like to like bounce ideas to see, to see where <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm glad we waited a month and a half before we did this podcast. I remember straight after that when we had come out of it, I'm like, dude, we got to talk about this. So much <laughs> yeah, happened right. just then. So yeah. much happened. Um, it was beautiful. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, whenever we uh, ingest plants, we do it with a lot of intentionality. 
And um, yeah, the, the goal of it is self-growth and diving deep into our psyche to um, clear things that are, that are operating that no longer serve us. And yeah, I had, I had quite the experience. Um, I'll just cut right to the meat of it. But there was this, it was maybe like an hour and a half in and we we're listening to the, the mushy playlist and I had just been dancing around and just expressing myself and like having like an ecstatic dance on, on this journey. And then I just, I, I felt the medicine tell me that I needed to lay down and I was like, oh no, oh no. And like when I, when I feel that stuff coming on, coming on, I get really, really resistant because I know that I'm about to feel some stuff. And then I just laid down and to put it quite honestly like it was like my third eye was opening up to this like to this light energy that was coming through me and it was like i was having surgery on my psyche and it was like it was shifting around a lot of this dense energy that i'd been holding it was very uncomfortable and then in that experience Corey, you got the hit to come lay down next to me and then out of nowhere Corey just starts like like it was like light language. It was the best way to describe it. It was like Fergie and Jesus coming out of your mouth. <laughs> and um, that's not a singing like, that like, like I'm, I'm lying down. We're at the Flinders Rangers. I'm lying down, and like I'm literally having this healing from Corey's voice. And like, how how does that translate to today? And what have I changed about myself? Um, so I've had an interesting journey with substances, mainly alcohol. And I like I like I've always had this. Um, like whenever I feel like sort of empty or like I, I feel this void of loneliness, like I would normally go drink. Um, and in the past month or two months, I, I just haven't had that, had that urge to go and, um, feel the void. So I, I'm feeling a lot more whole in myself. I'm not feeling like I need to reach for something to, um, to mask whatever is coming up for me. And I just feel more grounded and more centered and I'm making more decisions that are in alignment with my higher self that are helping me to feel better, that are helping me to feel more on purpose. And I'm taking a lot better care of myself. Not that I wasn't before, but that we all have blind spots and edges. And I think alcohol has been one of them for me that has sometimes run the show of my life where um, I've, I've abused it in a way where it's like, I'm not drinking this for a celebration. I'm drinking this because being fucked up right now would feel a lot better than just being with the uncomfortableness comfortableness of my internal landscape. Mm. So what about you, man? Like, how was that experience for you? You went really, really deep. Like I'm very <laughs> modest in my dosing. Corey is not modest. Corey's like, I want all the feels. Um, <laughs> like I've never seen you so happy. Like six hours after the trip, you're, we're like by the campfire and you're just like, man, feels so good. Like this is awesome, <laughs> and which is a stark contrast to last time we did the the shroomies, and you were kind of like on tilt, <laughs> like late going into that journey, like trying to organize everyone and everything, and the the cargo and whatnot. How was the experience for you? <laughs> Good question. So just really quickly summarize um, your one. So you think that like actual that mushroom trip with the healing and the stuff you experienced allowed you to sort of be more committed to yourself and trust yourself without the use of having to have alcohol because mm -hmm. you like experienced a lighter light. You're like, Oh, all I need to do is mm. sort of focus on myself yeah. and not do this. And, and I'll be happy yeah. more fulfilled. Yep. Yeah. It's like, bring, yeah. Bringing light into the unconscious part of me, which is the unconscious part of me was going into alcohol because it didn't want to be seen. So bringing light to that thing that was scared yep. to be seen. And bring it into awareness and allowing it to transform through through our heart like that that really is the for me that that's how i would summarize the healing dude crazy mm. so i'm trying to think as well i'll try to think about now how that uh journey like impacted me to now but mm -hmm. god damn that was crazy <laughs> Um, essentially like to paint a picture we went uh like real far we went to the flinders ranges we had a cabin and it was just like in the middle of nowhere. It was absolutely gorgeous. And we just sort of like me and um, shout out Andy Savage went for like a jog in one of the mornings. So <laughs> we went for like, me and Andy went for like, a, I don't know, it was like a four or five K jog in the morning. And then we all went on like a 12 K hike after that. <laughs> I was like talking about extremes. And then we had the mushroom journey. But when we went for a, 
a, a jog, we just kind of found this really awesome park and landscape. By the way, like um, mushrooms grow in South Australia and you pick them. So in terms of where we get like mushrooms from is they have like with really high quality natural mushrooms is quite blessed in South Australia to have access to, to those. And they just grow and you can be like, yep, cool. Um, but they are also highly illegal. So <laughs> for people who are listening, if they're like, oh, it's like, be careful, goddamn. Um, yeah. And we just kind of found this spot. Like we sort of like, whenever you're a mushroom, like whatever spot is, you sort of make it home. And we're like, oh, it looks sort of like really pretty out here. You've got the mountains, there's a bench seat, and we'll just like figure it out when we get there. And it's literally mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing. You just see all these crazy like mountains of the nuts. But anyway, I sort of got all my answers um, from you actually, Jen. Thank you. Um, and I've already told you before, but thanks again. Sort of the night before. Because yeah. my intention sort of was, I was just like, man, because obviously one thing that we recognize is when you're a mushroom is the journey sort of, or the actual trip starts like a week beforehand, a week or two weeks, like your whole week leads up to like what mm-hmm. you will experience happens leading up to the event. And then like when you have the uh, mushrooms, you sort of just serves you in a way. And yeah, we do it super hippie. Like we have a cacao ceremony. We do it with the mushrooms. We basically will say a prayer, prayer. We all say a poem. We give respects to like, you know, all the, the land, the, the land, spirits the mushrooms itself how they're made like we we're not messing around we're not like super recreational recreational use for it yes recreational use i think for some things has their play if that's to serve a role in your own life at some stage whatever it is and there's lessons to be learned through that but for us it's like now nah, we're doing it like super intentional which we love it's just it's just amazing mm-hmm. such like personal growth there's nothing better than growing and yeah so we're sitting by the campfire the night beforehand and i was chilling with glenn and i was like man i just want to like get this pressure off myself and I just feel like I really need to like just trust in me and just, just really let go. And that was like my intention with this. Like, cause remember the last mm-hmm. mushroom journey, I couldn't let go. I was just like, yeah. like just planning and organizing and all this stuff. And then we had the trip. It was awesome. And I got a lot out mm-hmm. of it, but I was like, it was 90% good. Could have been 10% better if I was just like, oh, opened up to it. And I just, I was just yeah. carrying a lot of responsibility. I was like, responsibility, Corey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, and this trip, I was like, I don't want to be responsible. I got friends. I can trust in them, but Glenn was like, dude, what if you just trust in like, not what's in with you, but like what's beyond you and whatever you want to call it, trust into your higher self, spirit, God, whatever. Why don't you just trust mm-hmm. in that? Because, you know, th- the world's got your back because, you know, you sort of got mm-hmm. it. And I was like, well, thanks, man. You've answered my entire mushroom journey. You did everything that I wanted yeah. to get out of it the night beforehand. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I was like, don't even need to do tomorrow. Mm-hmm. God damn. So yeah. that sort of really allowed me to think and be like, you know what? I'm just going to absolutely trust into everything that I feel right now. And I'm going to take an absolute boatload of mushrooms because it's what it's telling me to do. I just sort of want to skyrocket like my, mm-hmm. um, my own consciousness just to see what happens, yeah. how I react, how I respond. And it's yeah. not like I didn't do like crazy doses. If you ever research into it and you see people doing like crazy doses, but it was, it was, it was a significant dose. And yeah, I was super excited. We did the thing. We, we jumped in and I was like, man, I was going to give this like my best energy. This is so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, essentially from the moment we started kicking in, I just started having an absolute blast and having a good time. Mm-hmm. Just channeling whatever that was coming up. I was super completely in trust. I was like, you know what? I'm just letting the reins go. Like I don't have to be in control. Mm -hmm. Don't have to be super responsible, whatever's happening. And then yeah, Mm -hmm. next minute, because like in my my childhood, I um, sung a lot. I sing a lot, like I sung dance and act my whole childhood. And I've sung in front of like hundreds of people. I've sung in a band. I've been paid for singing. I've done a lot of um, those sort of gigs. I wouldn't say I was the best singer, but I was pretty, I was all right. I could definitely sing in tune, but mm-hmm. um, I hold a lot of like, and this is thanks to your reflection, like a, because of like you, I can reflect mm-hmm. on this. <laughs> and I was like, man, it's a lot of stuff that I held um, towards my mum because my mum was a really good singer. She was a singer in a significant band in Adelaide, Australia, and she was really good. And I always had a fear of being judged from my mum because I wanted to impress her with singing. So mm-hmm. I find it really hard to sing in front of people because I go, oh, I don't want to come across like that person. I'm like, shut up, you're singing all the bloody time. And I don't want to come across yeah. as that person that um that like that either thinks they're really good or is like, oh, I don't want to be judged. I want people to be like, oh, like you got a good voice, you got mm-hmm. a bad voice. I'm like, ah, oh, don't want to put myself in that position. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah. I'd be scared of something that like mum would do. And anyway, so I just started like making some tunes at, with my voice with the binaural music that was um playing. And it mm-hmm. just, just started sounding like a bit of a didgeridoo. And <laughs> Glenn, you were just like, yeah. dude, that's legit. No, you got a voice, man. If you're willing to open up, do it. And then like I yep. sort of just warmed up to it. And then I just at one stage, I laid down next to Glenn and just like let it go. I mean, it was like yep. 10, 15 minutes and I was just going 
nuts. I take the biggest breath in mm-hmm. and just make noises until like my lungs would empty and then take a huge breath in and just do it again. And um, uh-huh. it was just like ridiculous because it was controlling my whole trip. But mm-hmm. man, in terms of the trip went, the, like, it, the start was amazing because we rocket shipped and we saw all this beautiful stuff, everything like beautiful, just really experiencing like one with nature and the Flinders Ranges and like, you know, sort mm-hmm. of the land that we're on, just how beautiful it is, just ridiculous. Um, yeah. And then the second thing would have been, all of the knowledge and wisdom with challenge channeling. There was like a, well, for myself personally, cause you were dancing a lot. You were expressing yourself. I love it when you dance. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, it was like half an hour of just like, or an hour of just like, just downloads of real good stuff. And I probably took 10% mm-hmm. of it away. We was talking about some awesome stuff. And I remember a couple of little things. Yeah. And then it was fantastic. And then, yeah, we yeah. channeled the light energy um, <laughs> with the vocals. That was yeah. wild. Literally I was laying yeah. there. It was like, because I saw Glenn laying down. I was talking to my friends and I was like, dude, something's telling me to lay down right now next to Glenn. Lay down next to him. Then we're all laying down just listening to me doing did you do for like yeah. 20 minutes. And it then sounds we, um, really hippie to some, some people, but what Corey was doing was he was tapping into this, this higher frequency bandwidth and allowing it to move through his throat and vocalize. And because it was such a high frequency that you were bringing into you and like bringing out into this experience for everyone that was what i found so healing like it was this higher consciousness that was viewing all these quote-unquote broken parts of me or parts that i didn't accept about myself that was like being seen and then the dense energy was just like dissolving around it bro whoa that's wild yeah, I had. I feel like I had no control of it, and um, there's one thing that I'll probably share one day, but not anytime soon because that was wild. Because I've practiced it a couple of times since, and I'm like, I can kind of make those noises again. That's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, sh- I'll share with the world one day, but not yet because that was just absolutely just like, oh, I'm still trying to yeah. like come come back from that because that was and extremely that- vulnerable, man. Like I was so yeah. scared before I did it. It was like a real opening mm-hmm. thing. I was like, I had to like really like. Like trust you beyond it, yourself yeah trust beyond yourself man and like even thinking about it now my hands get clammy and sweaty like just to make noises in front of people be that vulnerable yeah but yeah. then we just had crazy chats afterwards and the, the whole next day it was just oh man mm-hmm. wild yeah and that, that's it man like for every, anyone that knows Corey, Corey is super res- regimented and organized and like has everything planned to a t and what i was saying to him before the trip was like why don't you trust beyond the the ego self that is like so good at planning out every minute detail of your life every macro every every minute of every hour why don't you trust beyond yourself and allow that thing to sort of guide your experience and without that i don't know if you would have had the experience of channeling light language and healing us all and really working through some of the shame that you you hold around singing because of your mom being such a good singer so it was it was incredible man and um yeah, it's really beautiful to use these medicines in such a conscious way and allow the consciousness of the plants to really help us grow and evolve and see ourselves in a new light, so to speak. Oh, for sure. I just had a little nugget go off as you were saying that. So in terms of like trying to apply that stuff to now, basically how, how it's working now is I really want to get um, myself just like more aware of that. And I, know I definitely am more committed to it for sure. And it's just like keeping on top of it mentally. Maybe you're saying mm-hmm. a daily affirmation. I'll do something to keep on top of it. But um, for me, it's sort of like at the moment, we're just talking about this off camera, moving to Queensland is that my intention for moving here is to like, build an empire and serve as many people as possible and just really make it happen and just commit a certain amount of time to it. So within my house, I'm sort of set up this uh, like work vibe. I haven't completely set it up yet, but it's like in the house, all I'm doing is working, sleeping and eating. Like that's it. And then when I leave the house, because the house is specifically for that, I can enjoy mm-hmm. Queensland, relax, and just let myself go. But I can't do it at the moment because the house mm-hmm. isn't set up how I best like it just yet. And yeah. what I took away from that mushroom trip as an example, and thanks for triggering this, oh, my God, ugh, this is where it comes in, was, dude, when I experience a threshold of, like, pressure that I put on myself, literally, I think about you, I think about the trip, and I go, literally, I say this, like, within my mind, I just say, literally, just just trust in yourself and trust what's beyond yourself. You get it done. Like every time I sort of mm-hmm. repeat threshold, like if you think about, if you're listening to a noise thing and like the, the noise mm-hmm. thing goes red and it goes like, eh, it goes like too high. You've probably heard some peaks in here of me yelling into the mic now, but it's sort of like yeah. when it gets to that, my mind just goes, just unconsciously just goes, dude, just trust in what's beyond yourself. And then immediately I go, Ooh, I feel down. I go, oh. mm-hmm. So 
I think my yeah. work to do, and thanks for bringing this up, is just to bring that threshold like down so I can get into that more more regularly. That's it, man. Right. What's the ceiling? The ideas that are the ceiling of the ego mind are the floor of the soul. Like the soul just like can see the whole chessboard. You can just see the next move as the ego. Say that so again. Like allow- Say that again. <laughs> What's the ceiling of the ego mind is the floor of the soul. Like the soul can see the whole chessboard and the ego can just see the next move. So it's like, all right, I'm going to tap into that, that higher awareness that is moving things beyond what I can see and trust that it's, uh, it is leading me to where I need to be um, to serve humanity and serve the world and live my best life in the process. And you're doing that, man. Like there's a lot of trust that goes into moving to Queensland that it's all going to happen for you. And it is happening. But if you didn't, if you're not able to trust that, then then you're not able to make that move. So yeah. it's huge. So how does that play out for you, man? Hmm. I think it's like I can give an example of in the past where like I've just trusted in my travels mm-hmm. and not necessarily having a set plan, but like trusting the guidance that I was being given to like go to Peru go to Brazil, move to Canada. Like all the, all these travels, they weren't things that I had like, I had like ideas about, but I didn't pull the trigger until it was like, I got the hit internally. Like I had the, the feeling in my gut, like, oh yeah, this is the move. I don't know what's beyond this point, but I'm going to go explore. And in that, I just discovered so much about myself um, because I was putting myself in a new environment. And then when you put yourself in a new environment, you turn on other aspects of your own being that you didn't know existed because you're like, if you only know yourself through the lens of who you are in Adelaide, then you only know a small fraction of um, who, who you truly are. So um, stepping into the unknown is where you discover so much. And yeah, I guess that's where I've really trusted the soul, my soul in, in giving me guidance and allowing me to, experience myself differently and share that with the world and express differently yeah what about like because that's like with travel stuff what about stuff mm-hmm. that's like internally in terms of in in like a point of view like just embodying yourself is there any sort of experience yeah. with that with with the yeah. whole trust stuff for sure man and it, it's it's um you know the resistance to feeling what we're feeling like the ego doesn't want to feel it but trusting trusting in the density and the stuff that I'm moving through is like my soul's got it. Like trusting myself when I feel it, I'm not only bringing myself back to balance, back into neutrality, but I'm allowing myself to be more free. And I think like doing that self work, being aware of when the trigger happens and when the, when the healing needs to occur and uh, trusting that um, there's a higher aspect of you that is going to take that from you. And so you're not going to be so weighed down. What about the stuff when it's like really good? Because you experience like a lot of highs as well. And I assume that, you know, a lot of time, like for me, like for example, mm-hmm. moving here and having like this, this amazing house and this amazing spot and it's just like gorgeous and stuff and like allowing yourself to like, yeah, I like to yeah. serve this or work for this or whatever. Like, and, and for you, like all the stuff that, that you do and, and that you share, um, how does mm-hmm. that sort of play out for you with all like, the really awesome stuff, like not just healing in terms of like allowing mm-hmm. and letting yourself be yeah. like having the best fun that, stuff ever. Yeah. I think that comes to living in alignment. I call it like living in the pocket where you're like, you're doing the, your, your ego is taking the actions that your, your soul wants you to take. And because of that, you're feeling really good. You're feeling really close to God, close to Jesus, whatever you want to call that thing. And um, in doing so, things just happen for you flowing downstream. And you meet the right people, you, <laughs> you, yeah, you meet the right people. Like I, I remember I was in Hawaii three years ago and uh, like, I didn't really have a plan, but I, in that process, I just met the right people and I just went on such amazing adventures and journeys that really were um, very nourishing, um, more nourishing than any sort of plan that I could make for myself, any any schedule it was just like i'm going to trust in this thing and going to blowing downstream and knowing that the right people are going to show up and i'm going to end up at burning man and I'm, I'm going to experience this and it's just going to turn on the tap to my creativity and yeah man getting in alignment is one way to really trust yeah which is nuts 
Now I'm not sure where to take this uh, conversation because I want to, I'll let you decide which one because I was just had two topics pump into my mind and yeah. I was like, which one do I pick? <laughs> and I'm like, what, cool. What's that? Should we go down your experience of self-expression and creativity and Burning Man or should we talk about you and your self-expression of getting extremely lean and then like letting yourself like relax for a while and then get getting back into it. Cause I think that's like an important one too. I don't know, maybe yeah. we'll get into that one first. Cause man, I see a lot of people and just in, in general have never had the experience of getting really lean or just like really, it doesn't have to be like shredded as like you or I get for like a competition mm -hmm. or something. But I think in terms of when you build a body for yourself that you're really proud of, it's just sort of, mm -hmm. It's, it's 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 an awesome experience and yeah. you, you've like you, you nail it and you do it every single year and you self-indulge for yeah. a little while which i sort of yeah. i disagree with the unhealthy <laughs> things that glenn does i like do stop hey, eating them, live, stop eating those cheeseburgers without any cheese and salsa man <laughs> <laughs> like, like just eat yeah. heaps but do it healthy and you're like nah <laughs> I'm like, All right. fair enough dude uh, but um for sure i think what's really coming up for me as you, you start us off on that tangent is discipline is the bridge to self-love. Whoa. Like, I love that. Why? Just quickly, before we get into the rest of it, why do you think discipline is a bridge to self-love? It's because it's, it's loving yourself enough to choose what you know is what you really want to experience. And a lot of the time, what you really want to experience takes sacrifice. So having the discipline to do the daily behaviors and habits is it really is a self, an act of self-love. And when you're able to do that, over a consistent period of time, the amount of self-respect that you create for yourself, you start to walk a little straighter, stand up a little taller, and you start to embody this sense of worthiness. Like, you know, I worked really hard to get in this type of conditioning. Or a business. And same thing. It's the same thing with discipline. 100%. Or whatever it is, that, that discipline, self-sacrifice, self definitely an act of self-love. I think, just real quickly before you continue, remember where you were going. I just really wanted to put this in there. <laughs> What's that? Mm -hmm. um, is if you're too disciplined though and you sacrifice too much, it can be a little bit detrimental. That's just one little point yep. I wanted to put in there. Sorry, please yep. continue. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. And no, you're 100 percent right. It comes down to like when you're being really disciplined, it really comes down to your relationship with food. For me, my relationship with fasting, my relationship with working out. And it's one that's really healthy where it's like I can do this and <laughs> if for whatever reason I fall off the wagon. I still have a good enough relationship with myself where like, I've still got that self-love where I'm not like shaming myself because I didn't adhere to the very strict protocols I put myself under. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah. When, when, like when I'm on, when I'm prepping for Christmas day or another <laughs> holiday, it's, um, it's, it's like, you'd know, like, yes, we get to this point where we, we feel like we look amazing. But that's not it. It's the journey. It's the journey of doing the daily things day in, day out that really creates that self-confidence, self-respect and um, that self-love that we were just talking about. Um, but yeah, it's like the, I feel like the physical body is a, the physicalized manifestation of, of our higher self and our soul. And it's like, why wouldn't we want to represent ourselves um, with what we consider to be very admirable and um, that takes a lot of hard work. And I know that you've, you're currently on that journey. I've just started again this week, but it's a, like, we love it. It's like, it's a way of being for us where it's like, it's not so much the result. Yes, the result's awesome, but it's like, I love who I am on a daily basis, waking up with so much purpose and intentionality in the way I eat, the way I nourish, the way I rest, the way I move weights. It's huge. It's like, there's so much connected to it. And a lot of people outside looking in maybe don't actually see that they just see the end result they see the vanity that is attached to it and they're seeing it through this lens that isn't necessarily true and for anyone that's on the journey you understand that a lot deeper you're like man this is these are the, beha the behaviors that allowed me to really feel that sense of self-worth and love so yeah what about you man tell me about your experience with that journey Oh man, I was thinking I've been like I've been on this journey too bloody long at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> that started really slow. Because what I did was this like early this year I booked in for a photo shoot because my plan was I wanted to get 
I wanted to basically maintain a really lean physique for like a year. And I'm still working on my relationship with food at the moment because I like to binge. I got the fatso gene and it sucks. If you don't know what that is, you literally have a gene that's sort of like, it tells you like your brain doesn't really switch off when you're eating. <laughs> like It doesn't go, hey, you're full now. You're just like, I'm still hungry. God damn it. <laughs> that's yep. the worst, man. So I'm trying to like work on that. And then it's good to having these restrictions. And as you were talking, I was just thinking, I was like, man, I'm a little bit tired. I've got like two months now to really kick it into gear and go go nuts mm-hmm. and, and, and finalize this and then come out nice and healthy. But I had a photo shoot at the start of the year. I got like semi lean for that in terms of like my own conditioning. It was like, oh, cool. It was about two, mu- two months away from my um, furthest conditioning. And then yeah. basically I sort of self-sabotaged for two weeks. And then that ended up blowing up my hormones too much. And I just like suffered mm. big time. And that took three months to get under control. And then once that was under control, I started prep again because I was prepping for a competition. Now, my intention was to um, train and get lean and then just maintain that so I didn't have to try to lose like 10 kilos of body weight um, for my next mm. competition. I only wanted to lose like six, um, mm-hmm. but it blew it all up. I went right up again and had to go down. So it feels like I've been prepping for ages. Um, yeah. So yeah, then the comps got canceled and I was like, God damn. So I had like a, a, a week off of being super strict in terms of just like, I was still, I'm still strict, but I wasn't as strict as I am. I'm going to allow myself to have carbs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to eat some carbs this week and then relax. Yeah. And then this week I'm coming in to start eating a lot less food and do a lot less mm-hmm. exercise and a lot less cardio um, just yep. so that I haven't got the calories in. And then I'll maintain this food and slowly increase my cardio um, for two yep. months and get really shredded. I'm probably the same conditioning yep. as what I was mm. at the start of the year. So I'm back to that two month spot now. And it's like, all right, it's go time. Like nice. now or never go for it. And um, yep. yes, yeah, start to kick. How do you, how do you keep that, that motivation and keep yourself from self-sabotaging with the, the it's like a, it's such a letdown when they announced that the comps weren't going ahead How have you been able to really you know it's the journey like re- whether there's a comp or not i get to see this process through How right do do yeah that? dude there wasn't even a problem for me it wasn't even an issue to be honest i, I literally saw it and i was like cool first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get like two packets of rice cakes and some rice <laughs> and some uh, rice puffs and just eat those and enjoy the hell out of them because I've been working like yes. my ass off and then I'll yep. revalue. But um, essentially, yeah. immediately, it was just like, oh, cool. Well, the comps are off, but I've still got to do something. I'm already halfway here. And it's going to be harder to commit because having something as big and like as like you really need to hold yourself accountable to a comps because you have to get super vulnerable on stage. Everyone's going to see you like the whole world is. Mm-hmm. When if you're booking in for a photo shoot and everything's just on you, the, whole, the whole, you haven't got the pressure from the whole world looking at you. So it's a lot harder mm-hmm. to stay disciplined to it, man. For me personally, I think mm-hmm. because I got into comps, um, it's very easy to be extremely committed to that. But something that mm-hmm. isn't as important to the comps, for me, I'm like, oh man, it's a lot harder to stay committed. So it's a good mm-hmm. challenge for myself to really strengthen my own willpower in terms of, for me instead of using something i love mm-hmm. i love using an event i love using something in order to keep me yes. motivated and locked in yeah. however i would like to increase my willpower without having to have something like that intense and mm-hmm. be really good at it and want to get really shredded and then just experiment um just experiment with my body and see what i can actually do without having to be like a full monk like eat this time eat this thing i'm like cool that's the yeah. only way i know how um currently to get like that extremely lean i sort of want to maintain what i am now so it's like i'm gonna get really lean and then just figure out how i can live my life and do certain things and relax on stuff and get control over my impulses and urges and my stomach going eat now um yeah (laughs) um and just figure that out and then try and then again i'll try to stay like do a lot healthier and and stay lean over a certain period of time and trust myself and trust what's beyond me and, and sort of all the stuff that I've learning. But mm-hmm. dude, this prep, what I've really understood is that like in the process of getting lean for someone who likes eating so much and someone who finds it hard not to eat, not to eat all the time is like, I've been thinking about this a lot and it's like, it's sort of like the, the prep allows me to, it's like sort of, I describe it in terms of layers. So it's like, cool, for this certain period of time, I'm eating this, I'm doing this cardio. And then it's like, I'll do that for a certain period of time. And then it's like, cool, now I'm ready to get rid of this thing. Now I'm getting ready to mm-hmm. get rid of this thing. So it's such a long process, man. And I've been doing it over months and like literally, mm-hmm. so I keep finding something new. I wrote my new, new diet out. I'm like, this is perfect. 
And then I'm like, cool, I can add in heaps of jelly, like jelly light, because there's no mm-hmm. calories in this, like basically whatsoever. I can have literally like six liters of jelly today. So I have four liters of jelly after I eat my dinner, go full mm-hmm. ego because everything I do is too much. And I go full ego and my stomach expand like crazy. It was super uncomfortable. And I was like, oh man, I hate this. So now I'm like, okay, now I've got to cut out the jelly. And, yeah. and it's just at that point now where it's like, all right, you're locked in. The snaps. Made, made that decision, man. <laughs> a lot of the time I like to get like little nuts or little snacks, something here that I can fit into my macros. And now I walk mm. into the shops and I'm like, oh, cool. Snack. My brain would tell me snack time. And then I'm like, absolutely not. And it's just, it's yeah. taken like four months to get to that level of like, yeah. Be super disciplined. When That's you get in the zone. Hey, yeah. hundred percent. I can, I can relate to that on some sort of level. Like I never competed in comps, but my competition was, um, the big trips that I would plan, I'd be like, I just want to be the most lean guy at a hostel. Like who the fuck wants to be lean at the hostel anyway? But that was really what I was shooting for. I'm like, man, I'm winning this competition. <laughs> and without that last year, I just noticed the extra, the extra drive wasn't necessarily there. But then I, like I, I came to it. I'm like, it's not really even about that. It's about just embodying the habits on a daily basis and being disciplined enough in yourself where it, like your actions and behaviors aren't, the t- aren't, swayed by the fact that there's nothing at the end there's just summer um but yeah it's 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 definitely a journey when there's such a there's such a letdown of like no comps but still staying committed to yourself in that process yeah and you got it i believe like you got it like i committed like to me 100 percent committed and like i would i wouldn't be as integral to my word if i didn't so i'm giving myself mm-hmm. two months and instead of doing the second to last week of october i'm like cool yeah. first week of november I'm going to book into something then because I've got a little extra time on myself. Um, so I don't have to be yeah. like as regimented for you this said, because I was sprinting. <laughs> yeah. You said something that just triggered something for me. Being integral to your word. I think a lot of people underestimate the, how, how much it develops your character when you are so integral in this one part of your life. Like everything's touching everything. If you are able to stay in integrity with your your eating plan and your training just watch how much that ripples out into every other aspect whether it's your career whether it's your relationships it's huge like just developing that integrity with yourself is one of the greatest muscles that you can flex to be honest yeah it's like your mind muscle (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah man for sure crazy so um dude i'd like to start diving into a little bit of that burning man stuff because that was the other topic that i wanted to start talking about because i think like well i'd like to know like now because you've like you've done burning man you've done a whole lot of work on yourself you you know you creatively express Mm -hmm. yourself through dancing and making crazy videos and then everyone starts like getting on board with it was like i love it (laughs) how does that like how i'm gonna ask this question in the best way possible how has learning all of those things really benefited you now? Well, let, let, let's bring it back a little bit. Like I think a lot of people, if you were to not know me in person and you were to just see the imprint of my expression online, you'd be like, oh, wow, that, that guy's really just going for it in whatever way he feels. Um, to get to that point has been a journey. And I, I, like I say it to a lot of my clients, like a lot of the time our greatest wounds hold our greatest gifts. So I had a lot of wounding around self-expression. Like I always wanted to do it, but there was always this, um, this um, belief, the beliefs I had about myself that were in the way. And one of my intentions going into Burning Man was like, I just want to experience what it's like to just be free and just to allow myself to um, fully express without judgment. And by setting that intention, a lot of the triggers would still come up, but I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to push through this and allow myself to see what's on the other side of not believing this thing that I've always believed about myself. And so Burning Man was really transformational. I had a lot of supportive people around me and an, an environment that was like really empowering me to just do me and to move the way I want to move and then like just dance the way I want to dance and to express the way I want to express so coming back into my life after that, the way I would show up is, is a lot different now where I'm not holding myself back from fear of judgment of what others might think. And I'm able to just activate myself and by doing so, be the permission slip for other people to really step into their own expression and to move past the barriers that they see for themselves. 
So yeah, it's been it's been epic, man. And it's um like I, I think that's one of the reasons we're here is to really uncover all the all the shackles that we have against ourselves, the beliefs, the stories that we tell about ourselves to ourselves and allow ourselves to just be free of them and to allow a higher expression just move through us. And that can that can be in dancing, that can be in a business idea, that can be in whatever it is that we're putting our attention and energy towards. Um, but yeah, it, it takes getting out of our own way, own way for that to come through. Dude. And like, how do you, how do you, would you like help someone else? Like go through, go through that process. Just say for themselves, they're just like, Oh, I'm just holding myself back all the time in whatever it may be. Any sort of creative expression. Yeah. Like, how, how do you help someone go so, through that? For sure, man. So if, if I'm coaching someone, it's like bringing awareness to their blind spots, bringing awareness to, the way that they are speaking about themselves like hey like i think there's there's a belief around here that you don't feel good enough to do this thing and you've mentioned it in conversation one two three times now you might want to look at it like just pointing it out to them in the most loving way possible being that really powerful mirror so that they can be like oh my god like, i didn't even realize that this is what's operating unconsciously because it's in the shadow so like bringing awareness to them for them to see, see themselves objectively so that they can be like, wow, this belief really doesn't serve me. And do I still choose to wear it or do I want to let it go now so I can step into something new? Bro. Hectic. Hectic. But yeah, like <laughs> a, a, lot, a lot of the time, like, like if, if you're in my, in my sphere and you, you see me a lot of the time, I'll, I'll be really triggering for people, whether it's triggering their judgment or triggering their desire to want to like express themselves a little bit more as well. Um, in whatever way. And it's like recognizing, all right, something is alive in me right now. Is it the judgment? Because if you're judging me, you're probably judging yourself for the exact same thing. Or yeah. is it the, oh my God, this is like, this is giving me permission to want to do the same thing just in my own sort of giving way. Giving people permission to play, man. They see you and I think a lot of people go, I wish I could play like that. Yeah. 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 And that didn't, that wasn't always like, yes, it was natural and it wasn't always natural. Like I think as kids, we naturally, we're in our play, we're in our joy, we're in our expression. We're not thinking about what Daryl down the street has to say about it. Damn Daryl. But then, <laughs> but then we, we go through society and we learn about like judgments and we don't, like we, we want to be accepted by the tribe. And so we learn to, to be the ego persona that is going to help us survive in, in school, in social circles outside of school. And it takes a lot of, courage quite honestly to like unpack that and really step out and be like i'm here to be a light i'm here to be me and i'm not here to fit in i'm here to just stand out and give permission for other people to stand out as well dude i just want to say that there's so much wisdom there if anyone's listening like if that didn't sink in click that back 15 seconds like five times because that was some powerful shit like straight up listen to that again that was insane. All right. So before I get into my last question, I just want to say mm -hmm. like, Glenn, because obviously you do coaching, you got stuff, mm -hmm. you got all this stuff going on. If anyone wants to like reach out from you and like get some value, because obviously I know you do coaching calls and yeah. stuff like that to see if it's a, if you're a good match for people. Um, if people want to reach out to you or get in touch with you or have a strategy call where they can like figure out all of these yep. things. Cause I know you give those to those before you start actually coaching. Um, mm -hmm. Where can someone go? What can they do to get in touch with you? Yep. Yeah. The best place to reach me is on Instagram at Glenn cash money. I'm sure you put that in the show notes, yep. but yeah, just send me, send me a DM. Like I, I am taking on new clients at the moment. Um, I've got two spots open for the, to the end of the year. So if that's, if you feel like that's something that you, you want to dive into, yeah, hit me up. We'll have a conversation and see if it's a fit, see what you're moving through and see if my skill set is able to support you in that. Yeah. And like, man, I highly recommend jumping on a call, Glenn. Every time I'm stuck with something, go give me a <laughs> ring. Perks of being a bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a ring like, man, it, man, how do I work through this? And he helps me either like... Um, it's not just like play or help me creatively express myself, but man, there's been heaps of times where like I've been like, oh... I'm really nervous about doing this. And then you've just like helped me 10 X that. And it's been one of like the best experiences and transformational experiences mm -hmm. of my life, which have like helped me transcend yeah. heaps of stuff. So like highly recommend jumping on a call with Glenn. Cause no matter what happens yeah. after you leave that thing, man, you're going to be like, your world is going to be rocked. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a, it's a very reciprocal relationship. Like yeah. I help Corey, Corey 
shows me how to cook vegetables. <laughs> if, I, if I'm feeling like sort of plateauing in my training, I'm like, Corey, can we just do like a shoulder session today? I just need to learn some new stuff because <laughs> I feel like I'm plateauing. Like Corey is a, a wealth of knowledge in many aspects and um, is doing the damn thing, moving up to Queensland and really following his purpose hard. It's uh, admirable. Thank you, bro. So yeah, just last question before I get in. It's just like, you know, if someone has sort of had that position in their life where you know, they really want to like start investing in themselves and start like, um, and I think in terms of your skill set here as well, like if someone wants to start mm-hmm. investing themselves and just make themselves completely better. And let's say there's someone who's, you know, had some business success, had some career success, and they've just like, you know, mm-hmm. had some things, whatever, like just some good stuff happen. They're like, all right, cool. I'm ready right now to like take things internally um yeah. and start focusing on some stuff like what do you think would be just like the best things that yeah. they get the most value from yeah i think one of the most tangible things that they can do right now is like who in my life currently is embodying something that i want to embody or experiencing something that i want to experience just write their names down like all right so these are the type of people that have the qualities and traits that i'm looking to develop within myself and you know develop relationships with people like that And I think one of the most powerful transformational things that you can do is create a community and an environment where you feel nourished in. It's no secret that, you know, Frosty Fridays, it turned into, it turned into like the Frosty Five plus Frosty Six help. (laughs) Help, But the environment of um, like myself, you, Andy, Rob, Kettle, like the experience of us all having each other's back in the best way possible, calling each other forward. Um, being in the environment of guys that really want to take care of themselves and their health is like, we, we all saw the fruits of it. So creating a community of friends that um, are on that same sort of path that um, only want to see you succeed, that can support you in the ways where you might not feel is your genius, but support you in the ways where, you know, birds of a fl- feather flock together. So hanging around people that are do- doing the things that you want to be doing and embodying the things that you are cultivating within yourself is, is huge. Yeah. It's, it's super powerful. And I know just for me personally, like I'm um, the little tribe that um, we got going on is like one of the best things ever. <laughs> yep. That's and seeking, as well. seeking out mentorship. Like yeah. don't be afraid to invest in yourself through mentorship, like learning from people that are, are already where you want to be, or just a couple of steps, steps ahead is, is huge. Um, and, you know, whenever I've invested in myself, whether it's through a coaching program or through one-on-one mentorship, I've seen the fruits of that tenfold. So don't be, don't be afraid to really put your money where your mouth is and to develop your greatest asset, which is you. Dude. You, don't, you don't need that new iPhone. You don't need that new laptop. Develop you. Take and care ask, of you. Heal you. And ask for help. <laughs> and ask for help yes, <laughs> we're just saying that now because in our, in our uh, mushroom journey just a circle moment back to that we're like there's another entity here there's another person there's another being and uh he can be uh, any one of us or he can be separate from us whoever he is but his name is help and whenever you need him you just got to ask for him and he'll damn well be there <laughs> you know what i think cory just you, you slipped that in there because like right after that you were like hey lynn i need help cleaning my car would you mind helping me clean my car and because <laughs> because Corey has such um he does this so much he is such like whatever he says it's like yes i'm gonna help Corey because he helps me so much so <laughs> Corey's not afraid to ask for help and now now he's just like I'm, I'm moving a bunch of stuff today can you help like he it's it's really for your own personal game but <laughs> you're right man like a lot of people like, a lot of people are like have is around asking for help and realizing that you know the squeakiest wheel gets the oil so like being loud and like actually putting yourself out there what's the worst that's going to happen someone's going to say no someone's going to reject you okay move on but you know if someone does reject you and you make it mean something about you why don't you just inquire within see what's there 100 percent. see the beliefs you might have about yourself around self-worth one thing is a lot of yeah Sorry, 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 continue, finish that. My tangent is ruined, so. <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I ruined it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just going to say, like, one of the main important things of what I've recognized is what really 
like just to get real dark and deep just for the end of the conversation is a couple of moments that I've had in my life is I've remembered people when some of my closer friends commit suicide when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I remember like there's a significant moment of one of the dads was just like, I, I don't know why he didn't ask for help. I would have helped him. I would have done anything to help him. And I remember just that, that, that stuck in my mind and has burned the image of it is burned into my mind and it's never going to leave. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I just sort of realized is, you know, and even just taking that on a less deep level is like, sometimes I go, Oh, I did this and that sucked and that was hard. Or oh, I gave this a crack. And then you, you tell one of your friends and they're like, man, should I ask me for help? I would, I'm happy. I'd be mm -hmm. happy as to help. So yeah. I've just been experimenting, like being unshameful <laughs> and unguiltily yeah. just being like, Hey bro, would you mind helping out? Like you don't have to, if you don't want to, but I'd appreciate it heaps because yeah. of the main reason that I know is that when someone does give you help or someone does help you out, it's, they find it mm -hmm. extremely rewarding. It's one thing to ask for help, but mm -hmm. it's also to, you know, give the gift of receiving. Um, yeah. And if someone does help you and you receive it really well mm -hmm. and you make it rewarding for them, it's also re rewarding for you. It can be some of the yeah. best, like, growing together experiences and bonding experiences ever yeah and like that brings us like real close to stuff and like there's obviously yeah. nothing that i wouldn't do for you and obviously mm -hmm. you back so um 100 yeah. yeah giving people the opportunity to give and so that they can be in their own abundance like oh actually i do have the energy and resources in excess where i can support someone else it's like a lot of people aren't in that mindset and until you give them the experience of asking them for help they might not discover it. So don't be shameful in like reaching out work, like for wh whatever it is. You could be going through a hard time. You could just need to move house or move some pot plants. Like it's, there's no shame in just like, Hey, can you help me? Yeah. Hey, I'm really struggling. Can you help me? Can you support me? Yeah. Can you just have a conversation? Yeah. hundred percent. It's huge. I, I just, I just abuse it. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're like, Hey Glenn, <laughs> film this video for me. Hey Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> like can you come record this thing for me like, <laughs> i was like i'm gonna help you but you know <laughs> yeah, I, i'm gonna commit to this amount of time not as long as you are man <laughs> yeah yeah no well, thank you so much man and thanks for jumping onto the podcast and obviously if anyone listening job. you can reach out to glenn on social media just reach out to him on instagram that's his main platform and um bro it's been awesome chatting up chatting to you and catching up with you man yeah, man. Thank you for asking me all the hard questions, which I was like, oh, is he going to ask me or is he? <laughs> but I really, I appreciate it, man. And um, you're getting really good at this, man. Like I've listened to a few of your podcasts and you're getting great at into interviewing. Um, you're getting great at just like constantly giving your gift, constantly sharing your knowledge. And it, yeah, it's really one of my greatest honors and privileges is to watch you grow and expand and do your thing, even if I'm still in Adelaide, but I'll be up there one day. Yeah, I don't know. And thank you so much for saying that, man. You just boy, you just like to melt me from the inside, don't you? God damn. Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, man. So sincerely. And thank you for that. So for anyone who's listening, man, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Big love. Peace.